Hello, everybody. Ben Rogers here with the Raptors Digest. And Riker, you hear, you look around the news media, you, you look at Reddit. People are saying that the the Boston Celtics and the 76ers they they have a they they have a lock in the East. No, the Toronto Raptors are the best team in the Eastern Conference. They're better than the Celtics. They're better than all these other teams. And yep, they have the roster to support it. They have the stats to back them up. They have an improved team this year, and there's really. We'll present the argument now that there's really no question as to what the best team in the East is. And probably, maybe maybe one of the best teams in the league. Yeah. Well, the Golden State is a whole different story. But the the team in the Eastern Conference that people you know have kind of been putting on a pedestal right now is the Boston Celtics. And, you know, one one argument that a lot of people look at when comparing teams is looking at the best players so first you we can just compare you know the top players on both teams I think it's inarguably Kyrie Irving and Kawhi Leonard for the Toronto Raptors and I think the Toronto Raptors take that one by a complete landslide okay positionally positionally though it would make more sense to look upon if you're like y- yes if you're looking at mm-hmm. the best player on the team then Kyrie Irving is the best player on the the Boston Celtics Kawhi Leonard is the best player. Kawhi Leonard is obviously more of a two-way player than Kyrie Irving. He has better stats in all categories, more points, he oh, not assists, more rebounds. Um, you know, he's been a championship MVP. But I mean both team both players have been championship uh winners, but yes, obviously Kawhi Leonard is in a league of his own, but I think what's more important would be to look at the matchup that you're playing because when we see next season, we're going to have probably most likely the Gordon Hayward Kawhi Leonard um you know, matchup, and they're they're almost in a similar place where they're coming off each a big injury. They're coming off each similar stats. They're coming off each, um, you know, being the the number one player on a team. So that's what I'd be interested to see who wins that matchup. Well, that's uh, that's in my opinion not even comparable. Kawhi Leonard, you know, Gordon Hayward was good offensively and was a, a strong player for the Utah Jazz. His injury was a lot more significant than Kawhi Leonard, so just assuming both come back 100% healthy, even though Gordon Hayward might not do that, you know, come back as strong. But defensively, Kawhi Leonard just blows him out of the park completely. You know, his athleticism, his ability to get to the rim, and they're both good shooters. But just all around, I think in every aspect, Kawhi Leonard is a, is a stronger player than Gordon Hayward. That's 100% true. 25.5 mm-hmm. points, better than 21. Six rebounds, better than five. Um, Kawhi Leonard's been proven to take a team, bring him to the championship, to win in the most clutch of situations, and then you're right. The defense, he really edges him out, and he's been the player that you know does it two ways. So that's an obvious win for the Raptors. Next matchup that people will obviously pick apart is the Kyrie Irving versus Kyle Lowry. Now, you might say that there's no contest. However, however... Kyle Lowry overall has more impressive stats than Kyrie Irving. He has mm-hmm. seven assists compared to five assists, 5.5 rebounds compared to the almost negligible Kyrie Irving's rebounds. I mean, 16 points compared to 24 points, but we're playing Kyrie, uh, Kyle Lowry was in a system where he doesn't have to score as much last season. So if you really compare them, is mm-hmm. Ky- Kyrie Irving leagues above Kyle Lowry? Well, I, I've people have listened to the podcast have – heard my argument and I'm more avid about this than you've been that I think Kyle Lowry is grossly underrated and he didn't shoot as many shots last season so if you look at the box score it it might look like a landslide for Kyrie Irving but even if you look at the season prior Kyle Kyle Lowry was you know up to 22 23 points per game he just took less shots for the betterment of the team last season and the little things that Kyle Kyle Lowry does it's similar to OG Right, he's his position basketball. He's a much better leader than Kyrie. You know, set being a demonstrative vocal person on the court. You know, setting up teammates. I, Kyrie is the better player, especially now. Three years ago, I think it was more of a debate, and you could maybe give Kyle Lowry the edge. I think Kyrie is the better player right now, but I don't think it's as significant of a gap as people make it out to be. Yeah. Now the next, uh, before we get into you know lineups, so we have you know the starting lineup versus the starting lineup, the bench versus the bench, depth versus depth. You know we would compare the centers, but it's difficult because 
JV and Horford aren't really an ideal matchup. You know, we have Horford is much more, um, you know, he's quicker out at the three-point line. JV has proven to not be as, not have the ability to play defense outside the three. He's been improving that. He's also been improving his three-point shot. However, we can almost say that you can put in Siakam, or sorry, yeah, Siakam. You can put in Ibaka. You can put in maybe even Greg Monroe. So there's a lot of guys that could attack Horford and continue to challenge him on defense. I think the most interesting matchup is either the Just- tandem... Of. Before before you move away from the Jonas Al Horford argument, yes, Al Horford's more of a modern big and can you, know, you mentioned it guard around the three point line and do the the little things similar to what Kyle Lowry can do. But if you look at how they play and when they play match up against each other, right? If they just say the Raptors and the Celtics were in a seven game series, every time Jonas Valanciunas plays against Al Horford, he it, it seems like every time he dominates him. He plays strong, big in the post. There's one game last season where Horford got the best of him, but if you look over the past two, three seasons, Jonas seems to always have a big game against Al Horford, and their stats are very comparable. Last season, Al Horford, 12.9 points. Jonas, 12.7. Jonas actually has more rebounds. He's more of an actual big man, and that's one area that you know the Celtics don't really address because they, you know, they're adapted to the modern league, but. You know, Nick Nurse wants to involve Jonas Valanciunas more in the offense, so maybe he could take even greater advantage of Al Horford next season. And Jonas is 25 last year. Al Horford was 31. So, you know, Jonas is improving. Al Horford's on the decline. So that that, that could be an interesting matchup if there was to say it'd be a series between these two teams. Well, that's entirely true, and I would almost draw, uh, you know, make it a draw between the, the center matchup. But my point was that even if, we have Horford able to expose Jonas Valanciunas out on the uh, out on the perimeter. Then there's mm-hmm. other pieces that we could throw yeah, at exactly. him. Exactly. Siakam, we could start. Ibaka, we could start. Um, there's different players, so I think that the center is sort of the least of a worry in a in a position. I don't think that uh, the win or loss of a game is going to come to the center position as sort of yep. like that pivotal piece. What I do think is the most important piece, given we have point guards, is in towards the favor of Cel- the Celtics. And, you know, that power forward, small forward position, I guess, I'm i leaning more towards seeing uh, Hayward and Leonard at the power forward spot. That's towards the Raptors. I think the tandem between shooting guard and small forward, um, which is now becoming less of a hard shooting guard, small forward, and now more of like a flexible, they can play whatever mm-hmm. position they want, is Brown yep. and Tatum versus whoever the Raptors decide to play. It's really tricky to understand what the lineups are going to be, but we can say either Green and OG um, perhaps the lawn, perhaps uh, CJ will step up, maybe even Norm. So let's just see Siakam. S- Siakam at the two or the three, though? At the three. Well, you could run maybe Kawhi at the three and Siakam at the four. Yeah, okay. So let's, but mm-hmm. we're going to keep, we're going to keep um, Kawhi and Hayward together. So let's just, for argument's sake, put Green and OG or DeLon and OG together against Brown and Tatum. Now we have the point side, you know, pure scoring goes more towards Brown and Tatum, but this defensive matchup is clearly a win, not in terms of length or athleticism, but just in terms of productivity on defense goes towards the Raptors' side. So the question is, what is more important in a series or just in even a single-game matchup? Is it a player that can lock down a pure offensive scorer or is it a player that can score more? Well, you look at the Celtics roster. And they, have, they are filled with a bunch of guys that are very good at putting the ball in the basket. They're volume scorers. You know, Kyrie, Jason Tatum, Gordon Hayward. Even Marcus Morris is only strong when he, he's chucking up a lot of shots, right? So I think in a vacuum, you'd probably take the scoring guy. And, you know, maybe, you know, it's tough to argue that Tatum and Brown are lesser than Danny Green and OG Ananobi even though I think OG will improve significantly next season, especially on the offensive end of the floor. But if you look in the concept of a team, right, you have too many just number one option guys, like number, not role players, just scoring type guys, right? Jason Tatum doesn't, he's pretty good at other things, but he doesn't provide much else than putting the ball on the floor. Like he's a solid defender, but he doesn't do anything else significantly well. OG and Danny Green fit within the Raptor system as role guys that will prop up guys like Kyle Lowry and Kawhi Leonard and Jonas Valanciunas, right? Well, if you look at you know how Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown complement Gordon Hayward and Kyrie, they do similar things. So I don't know how that's all going to fit, right? They're definitely more talented than OG and Green or you know if you want to run Siakam on the wing, whoever, right? But in the concept of the team, 
I, I don't know. I don't know how they fit. This is how the argument is ultimately decided. This is how mm-hmm. I know that there's no contest that the Raptors will be the best team in the East next season. And it's simply because if you look at the best players, do you need more than one person to contain them? Mm-hmm. Kyrie Irving, perhaps. But if you look at Gordon Hayward, right? Kawhi Leonard is more than capable to shut him down on his own. Yep. Uh, Danny Green is more than capable of shutting down um, Brown on his own. Jason Tatum can be shut down by OG. I mean, OG handled James Harden, right, who's yep. the best, who's the MVP of the league last season. So there's no one player on the Boston Celtics that needs to be double teamed against the Toronto Raptors, right? Mm-hmm. Unarguably, Kawhi Leonard will need to be double teamed. Gordon Hayward yep. cannot defend Kawhi Leonard on his own. So what's going to yep. happen is when they send a second person over, of course the pure scoring of OG and Green is not as good, is not as productive as the pure scoring of Brown and Tatum, Tatum off creativity, but what they are is stand-up shooters. And then when you make the double team happen, now you're giving the stand-up shooters the ability to stand up and shoot. And the reason that the Toronto Raptors will be more successful is because they have one player that demands a double team and that allows the players that play the best game in the in the you know in that certain offensive style to get that exact style right Mm -hmm. you have all these gifted defensive athletes on the raptors they'll shut down the boston celtics and you have one pure score that's better than every other pure score on the boston celtics and that allows the rest of the team to be better and that's just a fact and then when you add in the the um you know you put in the addition of the the stronger bench unit for the raptors Mm -hmm. there's no contest the raptors win every time yeah that's that's you we're on the same page here Right, the the way the Raptors just fit together, and the way the you know, it's not all just shoot first players. Everyone on the roster can play defense. I think, inarguably, we we probably have the best defense in the league with the addition of Kawhi Leonard uh, coming into the fold with all of our young guys developing strong. Right, I think the starting lineups. This whole video we've been particularly breaking down the starting units of the Toronto Raptors, the Boston Celtics, and you know, at at first glance, the Celtics look more talented, but I think the Raptors just have a higher ceiling and everything fits together. So I think the Raptors, even though it's kind of an argument for the starters between the Raptors and the Celtics, you you mentioned it there. The Raptors depth on top of this starting unit that, you know, we'd argue is better than the Celtics, just puts them completely over the top. Right? If you just look at, not including the names that we named, right? And not knowing who the starting lineup's gonna be. If you look at our bench, Fred Van Vliet, just nasty player last season, DeLon Wright, CJ Miles. Uh, Pascal Siakam, Serge Ibaka, and then e- even further, Greg Monroe, Norman Powell. Nick Nurse can piece together the top quality group out of those guys, and I, I think it just overwhelms the the Boston Celtics. Even if they ran, you know, Jason Tatum and Gordon Hayward forty minutes a game, you know, we we just outmatch them in pure things that we can do against the Boston Celtics. Yeah, well, I do like to toss in the argument that you need to have. A tight end roster you need to have a tight roster for the playoffs and really the the boston celtics they have their bench unit consists of smart rosier morris and like you like you mentioned he's not a good player unless he's getting a lot of open shots and then mm-hmm. baines or ogele neither of those neither of those are good players right and i'd be yeah. hard pressed to find a good okay, argument but... against them yeah, yeah but he's just a very classic slow unathletic yeah. white big man right um <laughs> That's just a fact, right? So now if you have Smart and Rozier, Freddie and DeLon, right? Baines can be taken by any any person, Greg Monroe, Serge Ibaka, Siakam, mm-hmm. and that still leaves two of those players now to come in and dominate any other player that they put out. And then, like you said, we still have CJ. The Raptors still have Norm. There's just so many players on the Toronto Raptors. If they want it, which they don't have the ability to in the playoffs, but if you think about regular season, if they wanted to just continue to run the ball, run the ball down the Boston Celtics' throat, they would have players that are consistent – and then still have the you know the fresh legs for it. So there really doesn't seem to be an argument that the the Boston Celtics have a better bench. And then like yeah. we said, that that the ability of Kawhi Leonard to attract two players, it's just it makes no sense to me how the Boston Celtics could be considered a better team. Yep. Yeah. And and the final just to put it all at the scale, the you know, the Toronto Raptors last season were the number 1 seed. We had DeMar DeRozan as our best player. This season, we replaced DeMar Damar and Yak with Danny Green, Kawhi Leonard, and Greg Monroe. We improved significantly on offense. We were a better team in the regular season than the Boston Celtics with Kyrie Irving. They, everyone says Kyrie and Hayward were coming back. We were a better team when they had Kyrie Irving. 
That's and that's you know numbers. If you just look at the regular season stats, both teams lost to LeBron. They're bringing back Hayward, but we brought in Kawhi Leonard, and I I think the Raptors just the lack of respect, the the fact that t- people could you know just just throw out there the Celtics are better than the Raptors. I think that's absurd. I think we are the top team in the East. Well, okay, well, let's just continue to talk about. It. We can cut this pot into two pieces if we wanted to, but essentially. It's a good point that you brought up on DeMar DeRozan because another issue, because people will point out that the Boston Celtics brought the Cavaliers to seven games last season, right? Mm-hmm. That they were clearly the more productive team in the playoffs. But if you really look, and I don't want to, I don't really want to make DeMar DeRozan a scapegoat, but if you really look towards how the offensive um, scheme transpired for the Toronto Raptors in the playoffs last season, it was completely. It was completely different than the the scheme that they ran the regular season. They regressed to, you know, isolation ball. They went away from their passing, uh, you know, to, through the smooth offensive passing. Yep. It was completely different style offense. So had they been able to play, and of course, like I said, it comes down to they didn't have, they didn't understand what the rotations were for the playoffs. But if you mm-hmm. had to have a consistent team that played the same way they played in the regular season into the playoffs then perhaps the you know the Toronto Raptors would have been equally as good as the Boston Celtics. So how much can you measure the impact of this new scheme that they could have now going, you know, into the the 2019 playoffs? Yeah. No, I I I 100% agree. The Raptors just just di- didn't re- didn't play their brand of basketball. It was fine against the Wizards, but they really just didn't have it against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And you know, we loved DeMar DeRozan. He did so much for the city and stuff, but you know, he's and he's a really good player for the team. He disappeared against the Cleveland Cavaliers, and that's something that Kawhi Leonard hasn't done in the past, right? So replacing DeMar DeRozan with Kawhi Leonard, someone who elevates his game in the playoffs, I think it just it brings the Raptors to a whole nother level. And the next question is, what needs to be done in the season to prove to those that believe the Boston Celtics are better because they believed throughout the entire season, majority of people that are avid fans of the NBA, they're fair weather fans of the NBA, the media, the Raptors still had the better regular season team, but I would argue that most people still believe the Boston Celtics were better, which they proved in the playoffs. What does it take for the, the tides to finally flip over to say, okay, the Raptors are the more legitimate team? Because I don't think that we it's ha- playoff win or regular season wins that'll count. Yeah, we have to beat the Boston Celtics, or we have to, you know, go further if one of the team, you know, if someone gets knocked out or whatnot. I think beat we, them we have beat them win, beat them in the playoffs. We have in to the beat playoffs. them in the playoffs. We have to go to the finals. That's the only way we're going to get credibility. And how easy is that going to be? I, I how we're going to do prediction it? videos going, you know, going forward as the summer ends. I think the Raptors are going to make the finals this season. Yeah, what would a playoff series look like? That's that's the big question for me. How many games mm-hmm. towards each side? I think the Toronto Raptors win in six. Six? Yep. I could see that. Yep. Let's well, but let's say okay. What what do you think though is the peak? Let's say let's say Gordon Hayward comes back and has the season of 2016-2017 on the Utah Jazz, where he was definitely one of the best players in the league in terms of stats production, right? So let's say he, he comes back and has, he wasn't yeah, you know, Kawhi. He wasn't Kawhi, but let, let's yep. say that let's say that all hands are completely healthy, right? Yep. Still six or seven? Six, six. The, the, this is this is all assuming we aren't even bringing into the factor that Kawhi uh, that uh, sorry Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward have, you know, Gordon Hayward had a serious injury last year, and Kyrie's been injury prone his whole career, right? Yep. We aren't bringing into fact injuries at all, right? That's another thing that could play a factor, but that's unpredictable. Well, defend that position then, because the Cavaliers were brought to seven games against the Boston Celtics team without Kyrie Irving or Gordon Hayward. Mm-hmm. So just defend uh, how how the Raptors beat them in six. Well, I think this whole video has been defense. I think that the Celtics, the way they are structured, they have a lot of players that do similar things. Very talented guys, but they're good at the same ask, aspects of the game. I think the Raptors have skill, like more players that complement each other better and you know really bring out the best on the defensive side of the ball. They... You know, not everyone's going to get shots on the Celtics, the shots that they need, while the Raptors, the guys that are going to score are going to get the shots, and, you know, the guys that are spot-up three shooters are going to get those. I just think the Raptors are more well-rounded, and that's what you need to, you know, well-rounded with more star power, and that's what you need to have a really good NBA team. Yeah. 
No, that's fair, man. And if you look at why the Cavaliers were, you know, they just they just narrowly edged out the the Boston Celtics. But I mean, they had the, you know, they had the greatest of all time or the best of all time, however you want to say. They had that LeBron James guy on it, but really. Kawhi Leonard, he's shut down LeBron. That's the reason he got the finals MVP. He's a guy who can score mm-hmm. at just the same rate in the playoffs. So, I mean, the Boston Celtics would have to throw out the same amount uh, of defensive pressure onto Kawhi Leonard, and then the Raptors would have a more well-rounded team. Uh, you know, that Cavaliers team was essentially all all deadbeats except for LeBron. So I, I certainly think that there's an argument to be had for that six mm-hmm. uh, win in six. But I, you're right. The argument's been shown. It's been proven. It's time for everybody in the comments to defend it. The Boston Celtics, they're not as good as the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors, clearly, overall, matchup per matchup, they're the better team. Yep, for sure. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Right? Are me and Riker crazy, or do you agree with the things that we're saying? Because we think the Toronto Raptors are the best, as Riker said. Check out the Instagram, the Twitter, all that cool stuff. You're the best for listening this far. Cheers.